Hello and welcome guys. So in this video, we will learn how to set up your CloudFront distribution on your application load balancer or on your Elastic Beanstalk environment. So yeah, I will be essentially showing you all the different options, all the different caching policies and all the different uh, pricing models and the one that you need to choose based on your requirement. And uh, before we set up, we will also speak why do we even need to set up um, CloudFront and yeah, so but before before I start off, you know, I just wanted to uh, let you know that I have an offer on my community. The link is in the description. You can get 50% discount. Um, there I have a full course on AWS. I have a full course on full stack development. It's, you can connect one on one with me and get consulted on your own career. So I mean, if you want to subscribe, do subscribe. Otherwise, you know, just like, comment and share if you want to do that again. So without further ado, let's get started. So um, I hope that you can see my screen. Oh, yeah, of course you can. So I don't have any distributions, but before that, you need to set up your Elastic Beanstalk environment. I have created an example um, environment on Elastic Beanstalk. Suppose this is your own uh, your own Elastic Beanstalk server. And this is the URL of it. So, you know, why do you even need to use this? So there may, there might be many reasons right now, if you can see my servers on North Virginia, and if people from different region is uh, different, uh, region are accessing my, um, my server, then it might be slower for them. The latency will be high, of course. And if someone from Canada, Canada, I think it will be quick. But if someone from Mumbai or Hyderabad or Singapore is accessing this particular server, it will be slow. So in order to remove that, we can use CloudFront. CloudFront has um, as locations. That means, you know, your request will be sent to the nearest server. And from there, from the AWS network, it will add automatically send the network to the, um, you know, there will be minimum number of hops and, you know, it will be quick, you know, a little bit more quicker. But the best part about it is that there's a caching policy involved. So what is a caching policy? So let's say uh, you your server is getting like, you know, a lot of requests. Let's say your server, your website is like very uh, frequently accessed by a lot of people. Let's say 1 million users. So and it's all static content, you know, it does not change very often. So what you can do is that uh, you can set up a caching policy. So let's say you set the TTL. TTL is time to live. You set the TTL of uh, TTL seconds of 600. I think that's that rounds about um, five minutes or some, so something. So uh, so for five minutes, the content that the user will be receiving will be cached. So it will be super super quick. So and after five minutes, it will get the uh, you know content from the origin so if at all there is some kind of thing that you are serving and that's actually uh what do you call it it's very static does not change very often then you can change the ttl to one day or 24 hours or whatever based on based on your requirement but i will be showing you how to set up for five five seconds so 600 seconds i am not sure 600 is how much how many seconds how many minutes but i think 600 is 10 minutes so yeah so Let's just move forward. If you can see, I have Elastic Beanstalk server. Um, don't try to access this. I will delete it off for you before it even reaches YouTube or any other place. So what we have to do is that we have to go to CloudFront. Now, if you one thing to notice that when you go to CloudFront, you will see this global. So uh, global is nothing but uh, if you see this global, I mean that means CloudFront is everywhere. Like I said, it has as location. I will provide a documentation in the description you can look at you can learn more about uh, CloudFront. so what you can do is that you can press create distribution and you can choose the domain so it does not say uh, what do you call it elastic beanstalk it says elastic load balancer so how do we confirm that it's uh, elastic load balancer so you can you can click on this and then you can click on configuration and like get you know move like get the uh, elastic load balancer from here but then 
I will show you a different way to do that. Um, I believe they here we can find. So if you can see, you can I I can go to EC2 instances. Search for EC2 over here, and then I'm gonna open this in new tab. And then if you see, I am a North Virginia, which is where my server is. I can see there's one load balancer and the load balancer name is this i am going to copy this it's also going to show me what's the dns name and what's what's the application that's connected to and uh, yeah so you can just copy this up uh and then you know you can uh choose the origin domain which is elastically load balancer okay cool so now you can go to https only um you know http since http only since my i haven't attached any any kind of you know if you see it's just http it's not https you can configure this is like pretty obvious you don't have to, i don't have to actually tell you about this and origin path like by default it will be if you click on info you'll get the information um the beginning with the forward slash so yeah so this option do not it's not needed to add so you can add custom headers over here it's not necessary about origin shield origin shield it's up to you to add it up or not so it will just you know add a additional layer which caching infrastructure which will minimize your origin load so this is helpful for that and uh, better cache hit ratio and all requests from all cloud front caching layers to your origin goes to origin shield increasing the likelihood of a cache hit okay so when yeah better network performance you can see you know uh you can click on using origin shield and like it really depends upon you so when you choose yes it will ask you to choose the uh yeah region so right now i'm just gonna choose no for the sake of this tutorial and then we can go to default cache behavior and um, yeah so this is very interesting so default ca cache behavior is this which will the party reminds which requests just if you click on info it will give a lot of information which is like very self op self explanatory but i'm still going through each and every option so path patterns wildcard matching so if, like you know i am gonna consider everything as cache so um yeah your protocol policy http and https and then um yeah you can do this and then you can click on redirect to http to https if they are on um i'm just gonna i'm just gonna choose this okay and allow http methods like if you're you're if you're have if you're running a backend server then you wouldn't need to choose this i'm gonna choose this and then request viewer access i'm gonna make it no if we make it yes then we will need cloud front signed urls to access this you can do this but then i would not recommend you to do this and then the most interesting part which is what would make most time of this uh, course uh, of this video so if you click on caching policies there are different different caching policies over here there's caching optimized there's caching disabled caching optimized for uncompressed objects elemental media package amplify so let's choose caching optimize and click on view policy when you click on view policy it will show the information of that caching policy so if you see this there is description over here like you know caching enable support gzip and broadly the gzip and broadly are compression algorithms and broadly i believe is by google uh, gzip is an old one so if you click on info i guess we'll get the information uh, enable cloud front to request cache objects that are compressed in gzip so it will essentially you know um, compress javascript json and everything you can enable if you want you can disable it if you want it's up to you by default it should be enabled according to me and then if you see um the minimum ttl is one second ttl is time to live so you know that means your cache will stay for these many um you know seconds so, so default is 8640 8640 is i believe uh seconds to hours it's 24 hours so it's like one one day so for one day your 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 user will receive the same same content so yeah that's something that is there and then you i don't think this is like very important for us we should actually go on amplify 
Amplify, you know, I don't know if you know if you have ever used Amplify. Amplify is a service and and it has like good like a particular um what do you call it setting that actually something that we can actually use. But then if at all if you see the default is two seconds, that means your request should be cached for two seconds. So now if you actually see I have created my own custom policy, you can create and create cache policy and create and then i'll just view the policy i have not added any description but if you see the minimum ttl seconds is two maximum 600 default is 600 so yeah so i will be having like 600 so my ca my request will be cached for six 600 seconds and then um i am gonna choose request you can just it's up to you it's optional over here this one is also optional and then you know function associated create you choose an edge function if you want i'm gonna add an edge function or something like that based on this and also you can add a web application firewall i believe this will cost you some money but it will automatically you know this will prevent a lot of uh what do you call it security attacks on your server it's up to you to enable it not it will yeah this is additional uh, security layer but it's very important though um so it's estimated so if you see it's it's very cheap you know if you're having like you know 10 million requests per month it's 14 dollars let's say you are crazy and then if you add one more zero it's very very cheap if i, I believe you're getting one 10 million requests per month that means you're earning more than your website should be earning more than 14 dollars for sure then you, i'm sure that this is all sorted one very very important part of this video is price class so about price class you know there are three three types of um, price classes over here if you see one is uh, use all edge locations the best performance you know uh, so if if at all if a user is accessing from a different if let's click on this i believe this will give us information yeah there you go at voila so if you see this part if this is these are all the edge locations that are on global edge network uh, of um CloudFront of essentially AWS, Amazon. So if you use use all edge locations, so all of the edge locations will be used, and then definitely you will have a huge bill. But if you use not, it actually depends upon your requirement. If your server is in Asia, then you should actually use North America and Europe. And then if you are if your server is in US, then choose this one do not it's very unlikely to choose all all the options it's really up to you i mean and then you need to choose this is something that's configurable that i think you can use and then you can add um, standard logging and everything and then all you need to do is just create distribution uh choose a second do not do not i do not need any security options and then uh it should be ready i it should be deploying it should not be ready by now but after we after you view your application should look something like um this i believe i had it open over here well i have not opened it up but but never mind i it will open up in like five minutes so i'm gonna pause this video for five minutes and come back all right so I am going to reload over here and I am trying to try to copy and paste this up. And there you go. It's HTTPS now and it's it's just scaring me in 18 MS. Uh, whereas if I try, I believe this will also be speed, but but it will essentially add a caching layer and it's very, it will be very quick. So yeah if you see this is taking 800 ms which is like 262 i mean depends upon my internet speed as well but if you see over here this takes like 19 milliseconds because i am in india and if you see the server that my elastic beanstalk is on it's on um uh, it's on north virginia usa which is like very far away like opposite side of the earth on the face of the earth yeah so this is why cloudfront is very important and then yeah it's very cool and make sure to if you're actually yeah running this running this thing so make sure to um 
make sure to close all of your distributions delete everything and then you know close off your aws otherwise you know you'll have a huge bill at the end of the uh, month and you'll be like you know what do i what do i need to do anyways uh thank you for thank you so much for watching the video i hope that this was very uh helpful and you've learned a lot of things over here but um let me know how's the video just comment down below like if you if you learn something and then subscribe if you want to learn more about aws and yeah do check out my community like i said it's in the description you can get the discount code so thank you so much see you all guys in the next video till then goodbye and take care